Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. What was that? Me, you guys. Oh, I, all right, I so, get a moist mouth. All night long, all I dream about is like the mountains in my hair. So I'm ready to do some business. Episode 346 of the Real Life Podcast brought to you by the HGA Group here to make your business better. Kylie Remchuk, Jay Chalmers, Wanye, Bagged Milk. Coming off another disappointing Oilers loss, but what else is new? I suppose. Hey, put it mildly, man. Like that one, that one hurt. That one really hurt. Oh, yeah. Oof, something popped. <laughs> <in the brain. laughs> like that one was. As far as like as far as disheartening losses go, man, that one ranks right up there because that third period was uh, arguably the worst period of the season. I was in a you three- say something popped in your brain, Jay. Yeah, I was in a three-hour argument during that entire game about the Oilers, and one one of my friends just wants to write them off completely. And you know, and I'm trying to you know explain the situation, and also you know I dr- address and uh, um, be aware that there are issues and what we need to try to do to solve them. And I couldn't get him to spin. And we bet at the game. He's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'll bet you right now, straight up, even money that Ottawa's going to win. So I bet him. Oh. And <laughs> it, was, it was a three-hour argument. I couldn't get him to win. And then the Sens won. <laughs> so it was, it was, it, it, it hurt. Yeah. Something popped. <laughs> a lot of, Dog. I put a lot of effort, a lot of effort into that game. And for that to happen. It was like through 40 minutes, the team um, looked really solid. And you're like, you hit the second intermission, they're up by two goals. And you're like, okay, we got this two points coming in. Just lock it down in the third. No problem. And then just early goal, another goal. PK lets them down or whatever it was. And then they just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. It was just so disheartening. Yeah. Like what the hell, man? What the hell? is going on. Yeah. I was, uh, I was talking to Wanya before this and I like feel so defeated when it comes to the team, like their schedule coming up is, you know, nearly impossible when you consider that you're gonna, <laughs> like Florida is on fire right now. That's like, they're playing the best hockey that franchise has played in like 20 years. Well, it's because of Kodak black, you know? man. He yeah. knows where to go. He knows where the heat is. Um, they also have a game against Nashville coming up and then they have Washington before the break. Now, I, I mean, those are three hard games and they do also get Calgary, Vancouver, Montreal, and Ottawa again, but the way this team is rolling, like, or not rolling, I should say like, fuck, I just, I don't have no confidence in them at all. Like usually during these losing streaks, I, I, I tend to be like, no, nah, they'll snap out of it right away. They'll get a big game from McDavid or something, but I have zero confidence that they're going to get a big game from anyone right now. There's just, I have nothing. I have nothing when it comes to them. It's it's funny how how mind second shift because I I feel exactly the same way and I I was I was sitting here I remember the game ended I'm like I'm gonna just yell so much on Monday on the podcast I am so mad and you just don't feel like it do you I just don't even want to expel the energy well and oh. it's interesting you said that because even the B cast on Saturday night was people weren't mad they were just down just the air is out of the sails. Like the damning, the damning thing I kept seeing on Twitter is people help people are accurately saying this. This is year seven of the second decade of darkness. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> is oh, that fucking damning? oh, oh how's, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Wouldn't the first decade of darkness be 07 to 17? Oh my God. That's only seven. Oh boy. No. I don't know. It's, it's, but how do you want to spin it? it, it how do you want to spin it? That's what people were saying. What's the decade of darkness one for milestones for posterity? What are the years? Well, I would, I would say, say it has to be the year after 06. So it have to be 06, the 06, 07 season is when it started. I would, I would say made the playoffs in 2017. Yeah. Damn it. The fucking Sabres scored. I bet on the wings today. So Fuck. it's five years. It's five years into uh, yeah. DOD 2.0. Yeah. Ugh. And With this the one, two best know, players on the planet. Yeah. And this one just Kodak feels Black's like Kodak Black's girlfriend, you guys. More. Kodak Black's girlfriend for real broke up with him over what happened in Florida. I'm not even kidding. I read it on hotnewhiphop.com. 
that was one of his artists he just signed to his label. And when she saw that he was twerking on that girl, the game, she broke up with him. So like things are hard everywhere. Not just honestly, everywhere. the Kodak Black thing is the best the thing best to happen. Thing to happen. <laughs> Hockey Twitter, especially Oilers Twitter in yes. months. If the Oilers were minutely self-aware, they would hire Kodak Black and that girl to come sing the national anthem. I don't think you'd do it for the national anthem. <laughs> I mean, let's be serious. Kodak Black here. can sing the Canadian national anthem, depending who his backup singer was. I assume that lady is a backup singer. I'm not turning down the idea of maybe incorporating him into your franchise somehow, but I don't think with the national anthem would be the best way to go about Remember it. Remember when Scott Mellenby killed that rat with his skate and then everybody threw rats? Yeah. Kodak Black is the good luck charm of this year's Florida Panthers. If and they go of- deep. Remember a few years ago when their other good luck charm was Kevin Spacey for a while? Oh, what? Oh boy. oh boy. Kevin Spacey was their good luck charm. What year yeah. was this? Oh, no time recently. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely, he would go ago. to games and be on the scoreboard. They were like, yay. They, their player of the game award was a hoodie with his face in space. And that was, oy, the oy, joke. Oy, that didn't age well at no, all. It did not age well at all for the, for the Panthers. Yeah. That's why they bring Kodak Black in to smudge everything. Yeah, yeah they're like, this will change it up. Well, fuck. You know what? Bring Kodak Black to do what I'll do, whatever they the fuck. They should bring him to Edmonton. Right this is brutal what's happening. I'd this like to see bring the brutal. Island Boys in to sing Imagine the national Imagine being at that game, 50% capacity, already fun vacuum. No booze. No booze, <laughs> no food, no anything. And then just a giant turd. Is that the worst or of game of all period. time to attend? It'd be, it'd be one of the saddest because that game was super important. It was really important. And it was just like <clears throat> the vibes were good through 40 minutes. Yes, they allowed the first goal. They battled back, got two in the second. The vibes were good. Vibes and were then, good. man, they were not in a real hurry. I lost a lot of money. I lost a lot of money on Saturday. Really yeah, up. that was, uh, I, I really lied. believed. I really believed. When they went down four three, I live bet them because I was like, "Fuck it, there's no way." Like, eventually, something good is going to happen to this team, and they tied it. And I was like, "Yes, they are back. They might still win this thing in regulation." Like, let's go. No. It was even more soul crushing the way it all went down. That way, I agree. And also, like, different <laughs> issues plaguing them now because the the depth scoring showed up, and then it was McDavid and Drysaddle who didn't really show up on the score sheet. I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah." That just there's there's just something that just tells you that there's something going on, right? Or or they look or so defeated. They just yeah. look deflated. Yeah, I I don't want to say there's dressing them drama, but there's just exa- there's something mentally going on there where they well, just don't think you, they can win. Did you see the tweet from I think it was Rashog this morning that's had Sevier get Sevier getting hit by Cuckoo and he was upset and frustrated and he's just Good. been saying that there's been lots of battles at at the practice this morning. Good. Oh, Maybe that's what they need. Xavier yeah. and Kuka are the problem. Fire them both into the sun. Let's get. No, going. not that they're the problem, but that they're just showing oh. you that like things are not great right now for them. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's what they need. Like they, they, I, they, I, they need, that's they what need I thought a, too. They need a, they need a practice tilt. It worked for the St. Louis blues the year they won the cup. They need a Tilly in practice. Yeah. Um, Rashad was also saying, so they did their battle drills today and whatnot. Um, but Rashad was saying pretty much every time it was McDavid and nurse going like up against each other in the battle drills. I found that a little bit interesting. Two guys probably trying to set the tone a little bit, set the tone. And also like, obviously other teams are finding ways to neutralize these guys. So yeah, put your best competition on them too. Mm-hmm. wear them down, find a way David yeah. will, but it's just weird. Like it's like everything that could go wrong is going wrong. Everything. Yeah. Well, they haven't made Kevin Spacey the uh, good luck charm. There's a positive. That seems bad looking back. Yeah, not great. That's for sure. Um, yeah. So that's where yeah, we're at with you. I just, I like I, I said, like I, said I, I, I was like, I was going to come in. I was going to yell. <laughs> I gave myself a good eight hour sleep last night, come in fully charged. And mm-hmm. I just like, don't really care to do it it's the worst it's the worst place you can be when you're not as mad and you don't want to yell anymore now you're just like tired 
of it. It's that's like when the that relationship part, is over, though. That's what I was just when saying. you don't want to fight anymore. a relationship you do not want to <laughs> be in. If you don't want to fight for it anymore, it's like, what the fuck is the point? Like, I don't feel like they're fighting for us. I don't feel like fighting for them. I don't feel like getting on this podcast and talking about them. I don't feel well, like it. I'm just, you, you, well, that's, that's, that's just par for the course of the good or bad. No, I've been, Hey, come on. I wouldn't go. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I mean, there's other times he's fanning us. Now he just doesn't want to. Now I just don't want to talk about them. Talk about anything else, but them like they just, I don't know. It's just unmotivated hockey right now. And it's I've never like, seen anything like this in my life with a team that was doing this well, six weeks ago. It's like an entirely different roster. Yeah, it is. Like, I mean, they're just, they're so easy to play against as well. Like I've even been sitting here and I'm watching because of course I am. I'm watching Buffalo Detroit and like, there's at least some fight here. There's been a few scrums like Buffalo four checks hard, even though they're not that good of a hockey team. And then you have the Oilers who have like all the skill in the world. And, and they, I've said this a hundred times now, like they're just, they, there's no give a shit meter. It's at zero. Like they seem, don't seem to give a shit. They, they go down early in a game and it's like, oh, well, we better get a power play right away here. Or, you know, just stick handle around. There's just, there's no fight back. There's nothing. It's like, think about how many games have been scored on first in the last, whatever. Like that's like all of mathematically impossible. Yeah. Like it's continue- like, it's almost like when you go up to a, to a roulette table and you see that it's been red like nine times in a row and you're like fucking do for a black gotta one here. Be black. Yeah, and gotta then it goes black. black and then it goes red like three or four more times. And you're like, how is this even happening right now? Yeah. 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 That happened to me recently. It was hard. Then you look over and Kodak black's been betting red the entire time. He's just twerking. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing here? You say, then you realize you've been sleeping and this is a dream. I'd like to see the Oilers bring in not just Kodak Black, but like every rapper they can find. <gasps> some kind of this some would be kind my of final conglomerate. dystopian choice during a pandemic. And then they bring every rapper in the league to the Oilers game to try and pump up the crowd. And Wanya has to decide if he goes. That, yeah, could, be, uh, that could be a way to make uh, the All Star game more interesting. Assign every NHL team a rapper to represent them, and oh, they do a rap battle. battle. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Ooh. I'd really like that. I like how it's like, you're not allowed to go to China. You can go to the all-star game though. <laughs> yeah. I'm super yeah. motivated for the all-star break. And I'm actually more motivated for the Olympics now because the Oilers have upset me. So I'm getting behind Canada. I'm well, really I can imagine the, hu- the good humor Connor will bring to his all-star game press conference. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sure he'll be a, how do you feel about the Western it. Conference chances, Connor? He'll be like, "Why don't you shut the fuck up?" How does that oh yeah, his like, like his press conference after Saturday's loss was just—I've never seen him look so just defeated. Like, oh god, I just <laughs> year seven. Uh, I don't even want to. He volunteers to go to the Olympics just so he can quarantine for yeah. five weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's got like, I insist. He should. He should. That Cassian exchange. <laughs> And he's like, I what was that? I, well, he, he's, he's having a back and forth in his uh, post game chat with the with the media, and he's like, I don't know what else I can say. And the media is like, we don't even know what what more we can ask. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Everyone's yeah. hit that fucking point. That's like that collective feeling. But like, <sighs> but if they start doing, making some changes, then that'll get us going. But they're just staying quiet and doing nothing and hiding. And yeah. just saying everything's okay. And there's no booze. Enjoying their coffee while they're in the middle of a fucking bonfire. You said you were at do. the game, Jay? What's that? You were at the game? You were in the building? No, 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 no. Oh, you weren't? Oh, I was I was uh, in a cabin in a three-hour argument trying to explain why the Oilers are still <laughs> got a chance to be okay. Well, said, was said, it the Unabomber's cabin? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, here, here is sort of the playoff situation for the Oilers if no one's checked the standings yet one we're still six games away from the halfway point of the season yeah, like, we must have some crazy. games in hand right now with all this like we're, we're not even playing that's the other thing is that we're not we're not even playing to try to dig ourselves out of the play once every 10 days well yeah. and that's what makes it worse I think too is just like after a loss like the one against Ottawa you just get to sit there with it for yeah. four or five days yeah, yeah. 
There's so, no immediate redemption. In terms of the division race, you got Vegas in first place. They're 10 points up on the Oilers, but Edmonton has four games in hand on them. You know, you're not catching Vegas, so probably irrelevant. Second we were place, like eight points up on them at one point. Remember when we beat them the night of our watch party and it was like, oh my oh. God, you got a 10 point cushion on them for the division lead. There's no way you get, you blow this. You probably win in the Pacific. Just, they well, were minus was, money was, at one point to win the it division. Was, it was after, well, I guess it was the next game. It was the the Pittsburgh game after that shit exploded. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyways, the LA Kings are second in the division. The Oilers are seven points back of them with three games in hand. Uh, Edmonton is seven points back of the Anaheim ducks with six games in hand on the Anaheim ducks. And then four points back of San Jose with four games in hand on the San Jose sharks. So that's all promising shit provided we can start winning some games. Yeah. And the other thing too, is it's great to have games in hand, but right now it also means you're going to have a very busy schedule down the stretch, which is yeah, it's it's something uh, else. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of Canadian teams will, but they're not dead in the water. And Frank pointed no. that out today on both shows. It's like, when you look at Vancouver, for example, Vancouver has to win or get a point in like 70% of their games for the rest of the season. If they even want a sniff of of getting a playoff spot and the projected cut line is 94 points right now which means the oilers would need 56 points in their final 47 games and that is like entirely possible like that could happen that's not a crazy number for them to have to no, hit at all that, that should just happen they don't even have to like exceed expectations for that to happen but the thing is is in the issue with the oilers and Oilers fans right now is it's they didn't start shitty and then got hot like that's where like that's exciting for vancouver and you can believe we started red hot yeah. and now we are p- probably since december 1st now probably officially the worst team in the nhl yeah i'm, I'm very confused about something why is chicago playing today we played yesterday or on saturday yet our game tomorrow is postponed Cause they, they did all this stuff cause Canadian buildings can't have fans. Right. So they, so they're just- that was their plan initially is I was like, Hey, if the Canadian teams can't have hundred percent, can't have fans, we'll push a few of their games to later in the year to help them make more money. That was the decision making there. I and see. in like, and it seems like in the U S you're looking at full barns there. Like I was watching oh, yeah. football yesterday and those, like those places are packed back. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But so then I, I don't get it. So what's changing by Thursday? Nothing. We're just, they're, they're just playing. They're just slowing down the amount of games they're playing to try to preserve, trying to make money if the buildings can open back up to hundred percent later in the year. So like the reason why Blackhawks are playing is because they're in the States and it's a, yeah, open, no, open I, business there. I guess I get it. I guess I'm just annoyed by it. I'm annoyed yeah. by everything Oilers right now. I, I just don't have. <laughs> yeah, I'm just fucking annoyed. Like everything yeah. is so stupid. Yeah, you look at the game last night. You look at the game in Kansas City. You look at the game in Dallas. These games are packed. People are all over each other. You're watching <laughs> minor hockey league. Minor hockey week games are having fans in the stands in Edmonton, like for kids. It's it's just like, I don't know, man, just so fucking done with this. And if we were winning, I wouldn't be so mad about it, but I'm uh, just going right back to this Buffalo Detroit game. Cause it's on next to me. They're allowed to have full capacity there. And, and I think they the still an- can't the announced attendance. So I think it was like 6,700 people. Oh no. <laughs> and so a massive snowstorm in Buffalo, which they said was a part of it. The team's dog shit for the 11th straight season. That's a part of it. And the Red Wings announcers were like, well, you know, and the borders closed to Canada and you have to be vaccinated to go to the games. And I was like, well, I think there might be some other factors, not the border being closed to Canada. And they were like bitching about COVID. And I was like, I don't think that's why there's 6,700 people at the Sabres game today. Well, they're getting a real show right now. They tied it back. Buffalo was down two nothing. And you said you had bet on Detroit and they've come back. Yeah, they scored two. two. Yeah, they scored two goals in like four minutes. Um, I bet on Dylan Larkin to get an assist, and he scored a fucking goal, though. Damn it! And I bet on the wings in regulation, so I'm probably screwed, anyways. Anyways, enough about that. Um, You bet a lot. Yeah, I do. It's a part of my job, I suppose. At least that's what I say. Jeff Skinner has two points. Excellent, well justified. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's how narcos talk when they get drug addictions. Yeah. That's why we started nation beer. So I can constantly <laughs> be drinking. <laughs> Um, anyone else on the Wordle thing? I play it, but I don't post it online because I know no one gives a shit about it. Oh, I play it every morning. Me and my wife have a competition. See who can get it fastest every day. And the loser has to pay a dollar out and it goes into a pot. So eventually overall, you'll just, you'll just have a uh, pot of like loonies. Loonies. Yeah. Loonies, yeah. No, no, you have well, a jar standing by waiting for a bet. Or what do you no, it's a virtual jar. This is, jar. We're going to, no, this is a virtual oh, yeah. jar. We're going to use crypto, uh, uh, we're gonna use... <laughs> no, no, no. It says it's a fun thing. We had to put something on it. I was like, well, listen, a buck a day. And then when you get to a certain amount, maybe it can be like you do you, you trade it in for I'm going to fucking do whatever I want. You take the kids all day. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, wow, how many dollars is that worth? Yeah, does that I like don't know. $17? But, that, that's so something like three dollars so free weekend. Yeah, yeah. So something like that. But listen, I've done it for four days in a row, you remember, Chuck? Yeah. And I've got it three times. I got it twice in three tries and twice in four tries. Yeah, me too. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a really, it's, it's like, I like that. It's only once a day. It gives you something to look forward to. Yep. Um, today's was hard. Today's Good. was hard. Today's was very hard. You need my help Chalmers. I helped you over the weekend. No, you didn't. Help. Yeah. You helped me a little bit, but wow. You talk about um, your eyes. I fucking put it on a tee for you. Oh, come on. I got it All today right. in on the fourth line, by the way. That's what I did too. And because I, I put, I don't know, we're going to wreck it for anybody else, but well, but the word, are we saying the word? We care. We don't yeah, care. Yeah, we do. Say it. Well, people, by the time they listen to this, it's like it's four yeah. o'clock at night. The, the word was shire. And so the third guess of mine was shine because yeah. I didn't think of the word shire. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so that's why I would have got in three, but do you yeah, guys have the same start word every day or how, what's your, what's your strategy Chalmers when you're going into this? So I've got a couple, I, I, I either use uh, like meats or steam something with S T M E and an A. So I can get two vowels and then three really, um, you know, popular letters, or I've used tears as well, which is T I E R S. Um, cause then I get the I and the E plus I get the R, the S and the T. Um, those are the words I've pretty much used so you're far. Taking a, you're standing. taking some wheel of fortune strategy into this. Yeah, yeah. What is, what is yours? I, well, see, here's the thing. And I, to my credit, I've gotten three days in a row now. However, I am generally horrible at this game. So I'm just looking for straight up advice. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always, my first guess always ends in an E that's my thing. I feel like that gives you a good sense of what the word's going to be. If you, if it ends in an E and you're like, okay, now I can like go through my process of elimination. Um, but I always guess the first one to end with an E. And if that's wrong, I guess the second time the word to end in an S and then by the third guess, you generally have a pretty good idea of it. I especially like that. There was an article that came out just recently over the weekend that a lot of people were tagging me in. Cause I said, I just feel so dumb when I'm playing this game all the time. <laughs> it's like, if you're bad at wordle, it doesn't mean you're dumb. And I'm like, Oh, they're writing content just for me. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It speaks to me. Do, do you uh, do it? You, you're not doing it. AJR and Guan, no. come on. You got to be on this. I need no, to... I'm not in it. There's too many tweets about it. You know how I get so like, don't weird. tell me what was that trivia hq we played jay that we got super into briefly yeah hq yeah that tricked me it was uh, i thought i was gonna was, get an eighth of a penny wasn't and it then uh yeah it was hq yeah it was that was so like good that was that was yeah. so much fun for like two weeks until you realize yeah. like this really the is prizes aren't stupid. arriving the five thousand yeah. dollar prize uh, that was um divided by the seven thousand winners four point seven like, million people won <laughs> you're like this is like uh, sweet i think at some point someone's gonna text my phone an 80th of a cent yeah that's pretty lame actually and then bird box came out and i was like i don't know she's wearing a blindfold like i get it and now wordles the triumvirate the different trends of the pandemic huh? yeah yeah mm-hmm uh, Kodak Black, on the other hand, I can't get enough yeah. of. I got, I got all the time in the world for Kodak. I'm heavy duty into it. I can't believe his girlfriend left him. That's a real story. You can trust hotnewhiphop.com. It's the hot new hip hop news you trust. Unlike untrustworthy hotnewshiphop.org, which you must <laughs> never go to for your news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, I'd say right, let's so talk about 
let's talk about football weekend, but nobody probably cares about that either. Uh, well, we can talk about football after I give some NFL. love after I give some love to twiggyberries.ca where uh, you can get ready for spring because, you know, things are kind of sort of melting. Is it springtime? I don't know. Is it going to get cold again? Who cares? Either way, Twig and Berries, promo code Nation 15 gets you 15% off. Um, anybody fall? Anybody fall today? I'm oh, good. man. <laughs> it is. It is icy out there. It is yeah. crazy. I, icy. I went and uh, walked my dog to the school so I could take my boys to school. You and I he just told you he pretty much told me there was yeah. a guy that was like delivering food next door and he decided he wanted to go run at him. And I was like, this can't happen because he was legit pulling me down my driveway. So I had to like get into some snow and give him a little, give him a little correction yank and be like, dude, Corrective let's yank. not do that anymore. But yeah, it is totally it'd be fun. It, like water skiing. But I was this just watching just the, at the wildest weather. Oh man. It oh, yeah. is insane. There's, you, you know, the bridge over by 23rd Ave and like on like just past rabbit Hill road leading towards like South Empton common on like 114th street. There's like a, it's the not overpass? a bridge, sorry, it's a hill, the hill. Oh, that ravine, yeah, yeah, yeah. That ravine that goes past like the, um, I don't even know what it is, but it's over on the south side on 23rd Ave. And they were saying that cars couldn't get up or down it. Like there's oh. prime videos of cars, you know, when you'd see the ones cars sliding down hills. I can't even imagine. Did anybody go into the office today? I did. I didn't. How are, it took how, a while. How, how was the How was the road in? Yeah, it was, it was icy. Like, I think I drove like 30, between 30 and 40 Ks, uh, the whole time and drove by a bunch of, you know, on, on Fox drive, uh, a car in the ditch, a bunch of different acts, random. I'm accidents. specifically talking about yeah, the hill which, getting, uh, yeah, that's Riverdale. what I'm going to know. Which, <laughs> like, which way in did you go? Oh, I took the big, I took the steep hill. I had no problems actually. I'll try. I haven't really? gone up it, but, uh, a bunch again, got the nation truck four by four. So that thing yeah. is. Yeah. But I, even when I was leaving there, the last time we were there, um, I was driving up and the guy in front of me was spinning tires and just like not making it. Mm -hmm. And so he, and to the point where he had to basically take a left into a driveway or else he was going to start sliding down. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh, oh my God! One hundred six, one hundred fifth, and one hundred third Street today downtown would have been epic because those those hills are steep, steep hills. Yeah, but I feel I like, sat- like a, if you get a lot of traffic on it, I feel like like some of the roads felt fine. Um, like once you get lots of traffic on it, it kind of mm-hmm. warms it oh, up. Oh yeah, a bit. like 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 Yellowhead or like White Mud is beautiful. Like it's not you can't even tell, but you come down into these into the residential streets yeah. and it's like it's a nightmare. And like, 100%. I've already salted and sanded my sidewalk probably like three or times today. And it just keeps to just sinks in. And then you're just like back to ice again. <laughs> oh God. Well, Ronnie was going to, Ronnie lives in, uh, who works with us, works, uh, or lives in Morinville and the highway from Morinville in was shot because of the, really? the, the conditions. Yeah. That's surprising. <laughs> probably open again, but it was shut at one point. I can't believe she lives in Mournville. That's a hike. That takes her like an hour to get into the office then, hey? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I have never time to do it. I don't think it's that long, is it? Oh, maybe. You well, would know for probably close to. Yeah, you so actually, for yeah. Me, yeah, I, you I'm 35 minutes away. On like, yeah, 30, 35 minutes. And she's probably about like 15 minutes away from me. Yeah. Um, anyways, the big problem Just, for people in my parking lot here, we I've seen three people already. They're getting stuck in their parking spots because I guess everything kind of melted, right? So their cars sunk down and then froze oh, again. Yeah. And there was the one lady who parks like right outside my window here. I was watching her all morning. They had a group of like. <laughs> they, that's going to be your road truck. Well, I mean, what Staring am I going to do? Out of like, window while she's having the worst time ever. They had three people out there, a couple of neighbors, oh, are good fair. neighbors, unlike me. Um, fair enough. But yeah, anyways, I was just watching and they had like three people. They were like putting the blue salt stuff next to the wheels. They had ice chippers in there and it took them like 30, 45 minutes to get her car out. I had that too in our little parking lot where all you could hear for a period this morning was just that like whirring sound of spinning Mm. tires. And it was just somebody in their spot just spinning and spinning. They got out, didn't take as long as as your neighbor, but like (laughs) it is slick out there. Yeah, It's just like I saw a video of an actual sanding truck sliding towards the hill on 23rd Ave. And it's like, if that guy can't get down there and send it, like, what are they going to do? Just like close <laughs> it until it thaws out. Well, I think it was above <laughs> zero today. So I think we had a chance, but yeah, it's, 
it's not, it's scary. Like, like this morning I, I walked up to my truck at like 7am and it's just a sheer skating rink to it. And I park on the driveway. So it's on an angle. And then also my truck. So I have to try to get into my truck uh, on this ice. And I'm just, you know, doing like the, the, the slide steps. And then you get to your truck and you get into your truck and you realize it is coated in like, you know, half an inch of ice. Mm -hmm. So you got to get out and try to survive, trying to scrape it while you're standing on slippery, wet ice. Like it's, it's a fuck. I'm sure there is some broken hips going on down today. Well, and I'm looking at the latest. This just came out within the last hour from Josh Clausen over at CTV. Uh, Could be dropping to minus 20 by tomorrow with temperature starting to drop at 4 p.m. Mountain. So oh that should be, yeah, it starts. So, so it's, it's going to be icy days. on the way home. <clears throat> it's going to be very slick on the way home. Shit. I might go home early. I just don't like working from home, but I guess I'll have to. Better to get there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, Detroit and Buffalo have just gone into overtime. Yeah, but they got a two on one here. Let's go. <laughs> mm, why the fuck? <laughs> I, love I just DJ put I just put an, I just put a ten spot on Detroit, so let me know what happens. Yeah, oh, I got God. I got the stream up here. I was hoping for a Larkin assist because that was my other bet. Um, just imagine like a ninety-five year old lady trying to get her car out of the ice right outside your Amtrak's window. <laughs> yeah, and him just like, will this helping. lady ever get her life together? And I'm sitting here well, screaming we, at the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, while like, 6, I bet on everything. Walk. Well, we wait for the results of the of the Detroit Red Wings and the Buffalo Sabres. Let's tell, let's talk about something we did get results from over the weekend. Uh, we had a very nice Chicago mix um, oh, wow. conversation yeah. on the pod. Wow, that was but yeah. that, <laughs> that it's scared. It's almost scared me. It scared me. I'm that so, thread is truly incredible. Oh, amazing. it really is. Yeah. So let's like, go through it here. The, yeah. Just shout out Electronic Jordan here for just doing the tremendous. <laughs> yeah, job Electronic here. Jordan. Do we know his real name? No, electronic. electronic. Electronic is his yeah. first first name. Electronic. Mm-hmm. Second name Jordan. Yeah. So electronic no, Jordan. That's a fake name. You don't know that. His real name is Electronic, but Jordan just a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, electronic let's go Jordan it. went to Costco and bought a big bag of Chicago mix because of our conversation about it. And uh, so step one, he made a recap. Big pile. Re- recap. Our conversation was. What is the ratio of caramel corn in yeah. there to cheddar pieces? Mm-hmm. And we, I, we, I had said that I thought that there was going to be more caramel because that's how I feel like every time I pull it out of the bag, we didn't know which ones may be cheaper. Maybe they want to put more cheddars in there because they're cheaper. Yeah, you just, yeah. you just never know. Right. And, so and how could you know? It would be amazing if somebody counted them. And that's when your M Chuck, you should start with. Well, and, and we also thought we also deduced that a good ratio would be a four to two ratio because of how powerful the Carmel is. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, so electronic Jordan took the bag, dumped it out, made a big pile, right? Uh, the ground rules were a piece deemed to be smaller than half a kernel shall be designated a crumb and not counted. Fuck yeah. Red wings one. Let's go. That took a turn. Uh, there we go. And any pieces stuck together also just count as one. So the last rule he said would favor the cheddar count as none of the cheddar are stuck together. The first rule favors the caramel since they're more rigid, they're more likely to break. So he I need you rules. to announce the results equally enthusiastically as when that goal went in. Whatever yeah. electronic, electronic Jordan found out, I need to see the same zip. So he counts all the caramel corn, put them in a bag, counts up all the cheddar. And he says, got to say, pretty, pretty surprised at how high the number is. The piles felt pretty uneven. The cheddar being much fluffier seems like a large volume onto the cheese count. Does the cheese count? And the final result, after <gasps> cleaning up, he, he said, much clean up, many crumbs, difficult to wipe up bits. A um, couple more. Here we go. In this, this is seven- drawn out. In this 737 gram bag of Creeders tra- Chicago mix from Costco, <laughs> the total number of caramel to cheddar is caramel 553, cheddar 553. What are the fucking what? odds of that? <laughs> Impossible. That well, that's what scares me. Like it just like it, it's it just it's it so be. machined. It's so machine. Like you, that's what makes me think about. Like this is so processed and so machined that they can. Or this is a simulation. That's the, the proof. Exact 
Well, in the metaverse, they could do it 50, 50. And maybe that's what this is. This maybe could be. And that's one of the hidden rules of nature. There's no way that could be even unless this is a simulation. But no, it was it's even because I, I said, this is how I said, you know, if you were looking, if you were thinking about how it was being made in a factory with a, in you Chicago? Know, a machine in Chicago where <laughs> the bag opens and there's two pipes, they each go into the bag and they go and they, and they shoot one, one pipe shoots caramel in, one pipe shoots the cheddar in and they have to be like, like the robot in the there's machine. There's a counter. There's a has counter. To do a counter. There. Are there has Oompa Loompas it, traumas at the Chicago like factory? Counter. No, can't you do that anymore. You Oompa saw Loompa? what they did in Charlie's factory. They're no, they're, they're not good workers. <laughs> so you had to go to robots. <laughs> but seriously, it was well, when I saw that it eerie. was even. It was eerie. You were like, "What? Yeah, that can't yeah. be right." Because even if it was uh, like five off, I'd still have my mind blown. But the fact that it was exact, like. That is Damn. scary. It's still delicious, but it still scares me. <laughs> also, the total number. It's also made like, of humans, but there you have it. 1,100 and whatever, 1,106 pieces of popcorn in there, not counting the half pieces and the crumbs. That's a lot. I didn't think it was that high. Like, if it's one of those, you know, you, it's a big bag, bro. I know. That is I, a huge bag. But, like, now I polished one of those it, off now, over the matter. Yeah, when you, eat, yeah when, you, when you eat the whole thing, just, yeah, now the guilt is real. Yeah. That uh, and how many calories would that be? That'd have to be like two thousand plus calories, probably. Yep. Wow. Cool. Cool bet. Paying out quick today. Hmm. Points bet. <laughs> I can't. Your M Chuck. I can't do it. It won't let me. One day. Uh, did you see Points Bet has a new video up with the trailer for our boys? Points that's, Bet so Canada. That's the partnership. That's the partnership I've been alluding to every time yeah. Nick comes on. Um, points by Canada teaming up and they have a video with the trailer park boys playing shinny against Paul coffee. Like what kind of world are we in here? <laughs> yeah, that's wicked. It's hilarious. Anyways. Um, I found that pretty funny. We, uh, your M check. You'll be happy to know that, uh, Chalmers and I, well, and bag milk that we did some, a, <laughs> I guess you could call it pond hockey training this weekend. <laughs> We went out to a cabin to go ice fishing and he had cleared off a big portion of a rink and it was really, the ice was, uh, it was a little soft. Hopefully the weather's a little, it was, yeah, it was like plus just a two, little plus cooler. Three. Yeah. it's not, um, yeah. You need like minus five, but we really, you know, we really got a good, a good uh, handle on how the puck's going to bounce, um, how the skates dig in, you know, there's no, there's no gliding out there. You're I'm Chuck and bag milk. So I need you guys to, uh, to really come prepared with your stamina. Cause it's a leg killer. We played three, four games. We ended up, well, my team ended up playing four games cause we won the championship, but um, it's tough. It's tough workout, like a very hard, hard thing. So that's why I hope the ice is a little harder. I hope it it's will like be. minus eight. It, it, yeah. It's supposed to be like minus seven, minus eight. That's cause it was like plus two plus three. So it was a bit of a slog, but uh, there's nothing more Canadian than going and playing. Some no. And you know, the wind, I didn't, I didn't realize how much of a factor the wind could become. Oh yeah. We had to change goal. We had to change sides after every three goals because it was just, you couldn't keep one side over on that. It was so much different going one way than the other. It was ridiculous. Like, so uh, yeah, I wonder how they're going to do that in the Jasper tournament. They must have a system they're for that. They're going to turn the wind off. Yeah, they'll turn the wind just off. Turn off. You're in the uh, mountains. The mountains. It's in the mountains. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah well, yeah. or no is there a the vortex? A simulation. You can turn off the wind whenever you want. Fair. Fair. Are you guys excited? I am. Yeah. Super excited. It was just, bag, I got bag milk it. seems very excited. <laughs> oh, I just feel like shit today, to be honest. So I'm just struggling through my day here. Oh boy. You finally got it. Huh? Out of well, boy. that's the weird part about it is you like, <laughs> <laughs> you got it through the mail slot. What happened to you? Could, <laughs> could be COVID could be a cold and you can't get a test anywhere. Like I was going to book could be the Oilers. I was going to book in for one of those, uh, one of the pay ones, but I'm symptomatic. So I'm not allowed in. So well, I have a kid, send them to school and then they come home with one. They come I home might, with a package at least 10 tests. months out. I might just, uh, Billy Madden, Billy Madison style and re enlist myself in grade six. So I can get some free ones, <laughs> <laughs> but you have to take How would at you least do grade three six weeks math? of classes. Grade six. I would not be good. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I'm bad at math in general, but like, I imagine I would be humbled by grade six math at this stage. I think I'm starting to do integers. With a great, 
I would welcome a debate with a grade six math teacher who says you won't have a calculator with you everywhere you go. Cause that's what my grade six teacher used to say to us. Yeah. Like, what's the argument now? I'm looking up what the curriculum is for grade six math. Um, looks like that'll put you on a list. Well, sure. Um, on the government website, improper fractions, mixed numbers. You'll learn to use integers and understand. Integers, yeah, big time. You'll learn how to understand <laughs> the meaning of ratio and percent. They will multiply and divide decimal numbers and perform operations with whole numbers using order of operations, bed mass. Bed um, mass. Your, your child uh, will also use variables, ratio. graphs, and tables. When do they start doing Sokotoa? I don't. I, That's not till high so school. So this is no. the debate. Is it a Canadian it's thing that it's bed mass? Because everyone else calls it ped mass, which just sounds stupid. So well, what is it they say parentheses. Who's, who's got yeah. time? Well, who's got time to say parentheses? Yeah. America. This is this is a this is a, 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 a whole podcast debate, Jay. If I. I've ever seen one. You want to debate about ped mass over bed mass? No, that was the okay. was being sarcastic. This is the uh, this is the filler content that distraught Oilers fans <laughs> that are too beaten down to argue. This will get us the chicks. Well, uh, we're trying to do to get through the day. All I'm let's, saying. Let's adopt another NHL team for this podcast. No, <gasps> no. Which one should it be? <laughs> no, no. That's the type of stuff that was getting Jr. So yeah. heated on Saturday night. So, <laughs> this, uh, I'll cheer for whoever Kodak Black wants me to cheer for, but oh, really, I'm an Oilers, an Oilers fan, so sadly. The only thing that made that uh, sting a little bit less on uh, Saturday for me is that my Bills beat the shit out of the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a good weekend of football. All the winners, all, all the favorites won, which was, you know, maybe not that fun, but there was good performances. And then the further you go into the playoffs, now you're going to get some really good matches matches. We got a bills chiefs matchup coming up. That's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, for a playoff bracket, that's going to oust you Chalmers who went deep. I know I'm doing really good. Cause I went heavy bills and heavy chiefs. And then I got some Packers. Why would you there. do that? Knowing they're going to face each other. <laughs> um, because if that, if you think about it, it, it kind of, I don't know, to be honest, I, <laughs> I usually we need, don't to one a lot, team we need to provide a lot of context here for the listeners. This is just more you and I chat. Yeah, I know you go. You, so what you do is you pick, you pick a team full of players. And then as they go on week to week, they stay the same. If they go on they get a multiplier, they get two times the points the next week or three times the points in week three. But if they're out, they're out and you lose that position. And so I was just hoping because what I've done in the past, my strategy has been to just ride one team from each conference. And that's exactly what you do. But if you lose that team in the first week, you're done. Second but, week, but you're done. You set the stage for, to have the two teams you went heavy with to but knock one, the other out. Right. But I, cause I didn't know which one I, what's what I thought. So I, I, I hedged myself a little bit and I'm hoping that the one that I hedged with more, which is the bills goes further. And those players score more points. That will be a better thing for me because mm. on the other side of the, of the coin on the NFC side, I took all Packers and that scares me because when the Cardinals win tonight and then oh the Cardinals God. play the Packers and the Cardinals beat the Packers, it's oh the showdown from 2013 or whenever the hell we went there. I, I admire your, your, your love for your Cardinals, but it's, it's, it's delusional at this point. You don't think they can win? I think the Rams are going to, I think the Rams are going to beat them. We, didn't we put a bet on this? I don't remember. Did we? Yeah, we did last did. show. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm really on fire with betting right now. So probably good. Yeah. Point. I'm actually kind of glad that you have the Rams side with your history. recently. Yeah, I am. I am the anchor for any team that I put my money beside. Did anybody I, watch the Nickelodeon, the Nickelodeon feed of the um, 49ers Cowboys? No, but I what? love that idea. And I wish, I wish like the NHL would adopt something like that. I think it'd be a really good idea. Oh, one day. It's fantastic. Okay. So Nickelodeon puts on a feed for the, uh, for, for one NFL game. Every for like so kids often. to watch football? For kids to watch football. So what That's they do is they have genius. Yeah. Holy they have shit. Nickelodeon commentators. So people that are known through Nickelodeon, like, you Big know, as the, 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 the Rick, the, what's his name? Remember, Remember Rick Campanelli from like much music, yeah. how he would do all <laughs> of the hosting. Rick 
Rick the Temp, that's right. Well, they have their Rick the Temps, who they they do the commentary, but they've got kid reporters on the sidelines. And the kid reporter on the sideline, he's going viral with how great his post-game interview was with Devo Samuel. But not only that is, so when they kick a field goal for one thing, they've got a SpongeBob SquarePants face in the uprights. And his face changes when it's like, if it's good or if it's not good, um, a touchdown, they put slime cannons on the side of the, of the, um, of the, uh, end zone and they pump slime in there. And when they show a coach or somebody, they kind of put like slime coming out of their ear. It's just, it makes it <laughs> and all, everything is just designed to make it more fun for kids. And Sounds I like think it's, it's absolutely adults. genius. Well, the commentary, they also do, which I, I really liked was they had like young Sheldon or somebody like that would come on and break down certain Jeez. things. Like what is a flag? What is this play? What is the kicker? Why are we, why are they punting it here? You know, the difference between going for one and going for two and they break it down. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's kids that just absolutely ate it up and loved it. So I thought, I thought they should do that with hockey because they could visually That'd do that. Great. With hockey. A guy getting hit into the boards and slime just goes <laughs> everywhere. And then like, yeah. Oh, oh man. Like blades blades of steel. The first shot. <laughs> Everywhere. Blades of Steel blood graphics or like NHL 94 blood graphics when you hit someone and their head explodes, but just with slime. Yeah. Big someone goes outside on Cody CC. If you, if you follow, there's, there's a lot of adults that were watching the Nickelodeon feed, as I could tell from my Twitter feed on, on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I saw that too. Maybe a fart sound after we let in the first goal again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would, what would be other ones? Sad be trombone? Other ones? When Cody CC gets walked, what's the, what, is, what happens to him? He falls into slime. a pit of slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 As he's falling down backwards. And when they show Tippett, they do like the cartoon anvil falling on his head and then the steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> oh, There's yeah. just a <laughs> clock over every player showing how much money he's making at all times. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> I got running. That'd down. be a turn off. Slime. We should put stuff in slime. That'd be all right. <laughs> slime. Come on, Bob, play along for the kid. What do you think they do to Gene? Slime. He pro- oh, he probably Gene would be the perfect one own. to have in there, though. Gene should get to do that. He'd be the most pure Nickelodeon hockey announcer ever. Mm hmm. Uh, that'd be good. That would be good. Stoff, on the other hand, the least Nickelodeon announcer <laughs> of all time. Maybe they could, maybe they could superimpose eyes on him that are open and looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> slime hair. I'm never. I'm very, very rarely. Stuff. It's like the, it's the light for him that that, yeah. that why he does bright that. as hell. Yeah. Oh yeah. TV lights. Yeah. The bright yeah. lights. The bright lights. Uh, Have you ever appeared on camera, your M check, with like a close light, like those guys would? Um, like I have a ring light I set up at home for when I do. When he's the live doing his show. TikToks. Yeah, is it I mean, hella bright what those guys are dealing with? Like it's pretty bright, yeah, but your eyes kind of adjust to it. Like it's not like blinding by any means. Otherwise, you would be squinting the entire time. So it's not like that bad. Like, have you ever had like professional photos taken or something and they got the lighting set up? It's kind of the same thing. Just that prison in Juarez. <laughs> your M Chuck, when you're doing your Jackson Home style stuff, Jackson Mahomes style TikToks, mm-hmm. uh, are you using your ring light for those? Absolutely. Nice. I've never made a TikTok before. I mean, Waz makes all the TikToks of like the podcasts and whatnot. I I don't actually understand on the app how to make one. Seems very. Oh confusing. boy, are you really that Seems old? Like a key part. Yeah, I mean, I I've just never figured it out. I don't I don't know what else to say here. It seems very confusing. A lot of different just, buttons. I really wish I would have known that it was a holiday in the states this morning when I woke up, and I would have. Uh, Taking more the day. engaged, been more engaged in my hockey betting for the day. It's kind of fun. I love betting on basketball on days like this, and there's just nothing but games. Get some nice spreads in there. Is there what live basketball right now? Oh my god, there's four games going on. Yeah. Oh yeah, sports world's bumping right now while we're recording this. It's great. Um, and all, all right. with the coup de gras, the cherry on top tonight. The Arizona, your Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> your Arizona the LA Rams. Go Rams. <laughs> Ram. We wear my we wear my jerseys, cheer and playoff football. Fuck, you know. It, I'm glad that one of my teams is going to make the playoffs. <laughs> Chalmers, why was everybody tripping about the Dallas Cowboys arena being oriented east west and the sun being on the field? 
Did it fuck with the game? Uh, I didn't see that, but there is these windows that shine the light in and they shine right in the middle of the field. Yeah. Was that a, I, you know what? People were like, why would Jerry Jones build something. that? It's a sun to people's eyes on the field. I wonder were people actually pass. bitching about that. That's kind of, yeah, funny. it is like, we've been there. It's sunny as all hell, but I didn't know if it could like affect gameplay. They're like, why would you put windows on the East and West? Where? I mean, I just heard something that, that people you might want to think garbage. about. Was that a thing? No problem. The yeah, the there was a lot of right tears to? in that stadium yesterday. A lot of people were crying. <laughs> they said, Jerry Jones says that's the most dif- disappointing loss he's had maybe in his career as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys because there was so, they have a team that could win right now. And like, they, Stop he's, penalties, nobody, no, I don't Lamb. think. Nobody in that sport wants it more than Jerry Jones. He just wants one more, just one more while he's, while he still owns a team and he's coherent enough to understand what's going on. Um, the fact of the matter is, is he still seems sharp enough. So I'm sure he's got a few good years, but yeah, this was a year that they could have done it. And the path was not that hard. And they were the only underdog to lose this, or they were the only favorite to lose this weekend so far. Jim Rams will be the second one, but Maybe Jerry Jones should bring back Michael Irvin. That's what the Oilers would do. <laughs> Michael Irvin could probably still play if you've seen him. Not as a player, as a really highly paid consultant. Well, did you know that the Rams, with with their abundance of confidence, brought back a player they haven't had for four years, Eric Weddle. Come on. Play safety. Oh, yeah, just for tonight's game. So that's real. That should be real confidence-inducing. Like he has them for playing you. football? <sighs> Not for them. Not anywhere, oh. I don't think. Damn. I'll find out what he's been doing while somebody else talks about all the fun stuff we have to talk about right now. Yo, they should bring back Jochen Hesht. That's a name. He can fix it. Jochen he can fix Hesht. it here, Oh, man. Like, they just... He can fix it. They need to do like, something. What this needs is a little bit of Hesht hockey, and then you man, fix it. You, you want to talk about the last time the Oilers won a trade? How about flipping Jochen Hesht for the draft picks that became Jarrett Stoll and Jeff Drouin Delorier, hey? Well, Jared Stoll was fine. He was a good order. And then Jared yeah, Stoll, Jared Stoll was flipped in a deal for Lubomir Vishnovsky, who was then okay. flipped in a deal for Ryan, for Ryan Whitney. Whitney. And then Whitney was that was it. It. How do we get Jochen Hesht? Was it for Roman Oxuda? No, it was a trade with uh, St. Louis. I can't remember. Was it part of the Brewer trade or something? No, Jochen Hesch was traded from the Blues along with Marty Reasoner and Jan Horacek for Doug Waite and Michael Reeson. Ah, he was part of the Doug Waite Swiss trade. Miss, Michael Reeson. Mm-hmm. That's what they call him, Aaron Chuck. They call so him Swiss Miss. Wanya, just to close the book on old Eric Weddle, because I know it's a real, it's really weighing on you just to know that. Eric Weddle, the safety? Yeah, Eric Weddle, the Ooh, safety. How did I know that, Chalmers? Maybe I'm actually a huge football fan and never mentioned just, it once in our entire time knowing each other. Okay, so did you know that he's been retired for the last two years and is now on no, the I got lucky. roster for today? Oh, he's been retired for two years. They brought him back for one game. Yep. That's great. It's like F1, and retired drivers. So if one, of, if one of the two safeties they have playing tonight, Nick Scott or Terrell Burgess gets hurt, we will see an Eric Weddle. And uh, you know what? I think they'll be throwing the ball that way. Not going to lie, funny, but think of how much has to happen for him to get into the game. This is like, this is like a Rudy Rudiger situation. One of two safeties. They play two safeties in every play. Oh, I thought you meant like there there's two, you just list two backups in, ahead of them. No, no, no. They have two safeties. So if one safety Eric goes Weddle, down, he's in. Oh, okay. They're sorry, rostering sorry, sorry. three tonight. Gotcha. And Eric Weddle is one of them. I think that you put Kyler Murray back there to play safety. He's back. I just don't think Kodak Black's girlfriend was right to break up with him. I mean, it makes sense he would take his new artist to the Panthers game and try to get her press. It makes sense. It's good business. But he, but she probably, unlike everybody else in the world, believes they weren't just actually twerking, that maybe there was a, a zipper open action happening. <laughs> An alleged zipper like open? The alternate angle. I feel like the alternate angle clears that we up. We need a third yeah. angle. Well, yeah, I need a third we only angle. Have two. You need a third angle. It's always that third one that's the condemning one. It's, it's, it's I feel like it's even argument. be in the list of top 10 bad things Kodak Black has done. You know what I mean? <laughs> I also very much enjoyed how many people learned about Kodak Black that night. It, it was, was a yeah, win very for everyone. Day. 
when I was uh, texting Frank, I was like, do you see this Kodak black thing? And he's like, we're talking about it on the live show tomorrow. And I was like, you're kidding, right? Like you don't actually want to talk about Kodak black. And he's like, no, I'm serious. I want to talk about it. And we did, we spent two minutes and 30 seconds on the live show talking about Kodak black. It got people going. I, I liked <clears throat> Wanye's tweet though, where Kodak black did more from the Panthers in that moment in terms of getting their name out there than ever before it is especially in florida where kodak black is really popular like an aggregate of all of the florida panthers every six to that one game that kodak black attended if you came to kodak black's people and you're like we'll pay you an unlimited amount of money to get us press he couldn't have done a better job big hockey guy we gotta take some a page. difficulties. It looks like he's spinning the wheels here. We gotta take a page out of that book. We just gotta get celebrities in here dirty dancing on each other. We'll be all right. I went away there for a second. I I saw, did you? Yeah, you did. I saw, I saw a disgruntled face and you twisting some knobs. So I figured something was up. Maybe they I, could get like the bass player from Maroon Five to come dance. That'd well, be much more. That'd, that'd be much more vanilla. Oh. You know, people love Maroon Five. <clears throat> of course, of course, they've got jams. So the we don't have do Adam Levine money. What? I got to keep bringing this up because bag milk got me excited thinking there was going to something <laughs> be happening Insider. today. Insider, and I loved, I loved it, I loved it, and I thought that that what he said might happen. I was hoping that it would happen because it should happen. But now we know our friends are having a California vacation. I was wrong, hundred percent. I was wrong. I'll own it. I'll take it. Um, Who take cares, my, man? You're take going out. Today on Twitter, the streets and, and doing, so. doing, doing the work for the community. I appreciate it. <laughs> but when, when you I, announce a press conference now, bag milk, they get asked them if there's a press conference now. That's impressive. It's uh, I, I, what I would say is the source is good. The info in this case wasn't so. Um, but maybe I'm taking, true. Maybe there was a likelihood. Who cares? Um, you know, like I'm taking my lumps today, deservedly so. I'm Are people it. even saying anything? No, but what's interesting to me is there, there's some people taking shots, but like nation citizens for the most part are, you know, because I said, listen, I'm wrong. I'll take the L no problem. I'll own it. People are like, okay, okay. It's not like I'm fighting against it, but what's interesting is nobody's really mad at me. They're mad that nothing happened. Yeah, exactly. That's what I find the most interesting. So when Rashog, when Rashog this morning tweeted, nothing's coming. The Oilers brass are in California doing their scouting meetings. The reaction to that tweet was spicy, very spicy. So it just seems like everybody's hoping for some, some change here because well, um, yes. it's not great. To provide some context though, at least for scouting meetings, like that's like also their pro scouts that are in attendance. So hopefully they're creating the short list. And Uncle Ken is working the phones and hopefully we see some action. I get you just can't pull trigger on it, make a trade happen in one second. I know it's a process. And, but when you, when, when he gets asked and there's questions about using future assets to try to do things and it's met with essentially we won't, that's a concern. Well, Tyler, you, I mean, Tyler, first of all, I got to give him some love for doing videos on the nation network YouTube page. Go subscribe there. He's got, we've got more stuff coming. I promise you, but Tyler, your takeaway on that press conference was something. And I'm paraphrasing, jump in. It's like, you can't say you're going all in when you're not willing to make a move or something like that. Right. Well, and now, so like the term all in kind of got thrown around twice in that press conference. And, and it was, he was asked if you would give up the first round pick for a rental and he said, no, he's not doing that. I'm paraphrasing a bit here. But Which I don't like, disagree okay. with, by the way. Yeah, sure. Um, but then he was also asked like about going all in. And he was like, well, we're already spending to the cap. Doesn't that mean we're all in? And it's like, oh okay. So like. My God in heaven. Dallas Aikens was all in. This is not all in. Well, this is. But that's the thing, though, is that Ken Holland had, you know, a good amount of cap space this offseason to spend. And this was supposed to be the summer where the Oilers went all in. You spend to the cap. You use that money as best as you can to make this year's team as good as you can. And he did, he spent the money. This is the roster Ken Holland built. He had full flexibility this summer to do so many different things. And this is the team we ended up with the team with the same issues that they always have. That's why I think this Not is enough our- Kodak black. And 100%. That too? That's the All issue. Right. This team has always had. Yeah. Right, Not enough Kodak Black, too much Lil Xan. 
<laughs> Who is the musician you would associate most with the Oilers? Nickelback. Have to be a rapper? Nickelback. Yeah, probably Nickelback. Or if you want to go more modern, maybe a little Whale and the Wolf. Good local band. Oh. Stompin' Tom. Diddy Lang. Everybody loves Whale and the Andy Wolf. Lang. That's impressive. I, I had a Whale and the Wolf disc or album downloaded on my song long t- or on my phone long time ago. I'm surprised you know who they are. Um, so I used to work at the first off, they do all the intro music for the DFO rundown. So shout out to Whale and the Wolf. But I used to work at the Bear with their lead singer, Ryan. Um, and then Lieutenant Eric, who works on the Nielsen show, his brother is in the band as well. Hmm. Plenty of that's funny. Fun. Of good uh, which one's the whale? Remember. Which one's the wolf? <laughs> that's the mystery. <laughs> oh, you're M. Chuck. Where it's good to laugh. I'm watching the Colorado Minnesota game right now. No money on it. Just watching because I love the sport. For now. I'm seeing a bunch. Of, I'm seeing a bunch of points bet advertisements. Shout out to points bet. There's points bet advertisements everywhere. I see them all the time, man. You're welcome. They're making a splash. Yep. Yeah, they are. All right. Good. We good? Anyone else have anything uh, else they need know. to get off their chests? Like I said, I wanted to come in here full of energy, but I am a beaten down soul. <laughs> like uh, what's mm-hmm. what if we're talking betting now, mm-hmm. Oilers play the Panthers on Thursday. The win. Panthers have scored 36 goals in their last six games. What are we doing here? We bet the Oilers win this one. The They're Chinese this national one. team to beat the Canadian national team in ice hockey in Beijing. Hmm. Parlay that bet with the Oilers to beat the Panthers. It seems like that's the kind of game that the Oilers will win, you know? Hey, that's they showed up they're against Oilers. They're going to win it. They're going to win it, and then they're going to shit their shit the bed after that. Like, they'll, who do they play after that? Probably a good team, actually. Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. EOA, Calgary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, we'll lose that one, that's, which definitely, you know, mentally, uh, you know, and civically is a game we need to win. Civically. Uh, what's going on Saturday? Well, I'll be honest. We had big, we have big plans for this Saturday and that's to go to a game with a bunch of nation citizens and we got a bunch of tickets and we've got some people that are coming with us. We still have some spots available, but in all honesty, it's a weird thing. Like we'll try and do it. If people want to come with us, I will happily go to the game with you, but with the low, no fans and the no, the no drinking and the no that, like I get why this is a slog for anyone that wanted to, to come to the game. But if you want to come join us, I'm just being brutally honest here. Normally I should be selling the sizzle, but it's fucking weird right now. So come join us if you want to not, if you, if you feel comfortable and if you don't, we'll wait till things are normal and we'll do it right. And we'll do it big, but we don't, it's just, it's a weird thing, but I'm going to the game. I think there's about 12, 15 of us right now. We've still got a few tickets left. If you want to come with us, we'll go to the game before. We'll go hang out before where we can have some drinks and then and eat and then go to the game on Saturday and God will. And I hope they win. They need to win. I need to see them win. If you want to see for yourself what a legally mandated sober BOA game looks like in an arena, we got you. one way to find out. We got you. Our friends at backside are helping us out with this. They lined up all the tickets. Uh, we started with a bunch. We don't know how many we have because of the restrictions. So that's why we're only selling so many. Uh, but there's a, there's already a good number of us going. The whole plan was to have like a hundred people come, but we can't, we physically don't have those tickets. We don't have those tickets anymore, but we've got a bunch still together. So come join us. If you like, check us out. We got it on the nation gear store. I'm going to come, I'm going to be positive. Mine. I'm just a beaten down fan right now, but I under, also understand that it's weird right now. So if you're comfortable, come join us. We'll have fun safely. Uh, link for the tickets I just put up on both the Oilers Nation and the Real Life Twitter account. So you can go check those out. So Nation Real Life on Twitter or at Oilers Nation. There you go. Do it. I got a question. Was that a sell job? Was that a good sell job? Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> it was an honest sell job. I think it's time to be honest because it's fucking, it's a weird fucking time right now. I got a question about the Canadian Olympic team. When are they supposed to have the roster constructed? How come yeah. I can't find much online about that? Uh, yeah, I, we're just kind of waiting. Like there's, I think well, they're really this, taking their time. We know a so few pieces. The, like the, Josh the Edmonton saying, Oilers actually not- might go play for Canada. They might just call it a season <laughs> and go play all of them. Eric Stahl, Ryan Spooner, oh. Josh Hosang. Ryan Spooner. Uh, I, think Devin, I think Devin Dubnik's probably going to be the goalie. Yeah. 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 So if these guys get sick, they just have to stay in China for five weeks. Yeah, man. But for some of these guys, like this is going to be the pinnacle of their any or their hockey yeah, careers hell yeah. going to play, represent Canada. 
I'd do it. I mean, one potential, career, one but... name to potentially keep an eye on, Evander Kane. <laughs> oh, yeah. If yeah, the Evander. San Jose Sharks release him from his contract, he'd be eligible to play for Canada. Talent-wise, he'd be one of the best players for At Canada. The tournament. Do not screw around in Beijing if you go Evander Kane. They, you will yeah. never be heard from again. Well, it's t- yeah. It, I think if it'll be he- tough there. If Evander Kane has to be one of the guys who like tests positive at the end of the tournament and has to spend like three more weeks in China, that should be his NHL suspension. They should be like, you know what? That was bad enough. You should learn he'll, your lesson now. He'll sign with the uh, Kunlun Red Star. Yeah, but the thing there. is, he just, just didn't he just there. have COVID? Yeah, he did. Um, so that that is interesting as well. Oh, yeah, maybe um, that's that exemption. I don't know. But uh, who knows? But uh, like that's those are our rules, not their yeah. rules. Uh, Owen Power, the first overall pick from the draft last season, yeah. scored a hat-trick in the World Juniors. He'll be there as well. Probably be one of Canada's better players. Played against yeah. uh, men at the World Hockey Championships last season as well. Mm-hmm. I really... The way this Oilers last month and change is going, I really need the Olympics just for something to yeah. cheer for. Like I'm really <laughs> not man, even I'm hockey, just, like everything. Uh, yeah, I'm just really yeah. looking forward to settling in and watching the biathlon or something just yeah. like that I can really get behind. 100%. Skiing, we're gonna fall in love with some skiers for a couple yeah, weeks. Absolutely, oh, yeah. moguls. Moguls, yeah, you know, yeah, the moguls, and it's usually the first. So that guy, the, that I know, like I that guy and girl it's always get first. It's one of the first events, and I don't, I'm like, oh, and I, it, it, it's one of my favorite ones, and I hate that it ends so fast. I know. I love all this. Did you hear about the new event, mogul dancing, the rolling out charmers? Go down. Guys dancing and mogul skiing together for the first time. Oh, man. That's good. It's going to be awesome. I saw TikTok today. Is it doubles? (laughs) I saw TikTok today of a highlight from like mogul skiing, and the guy goes and he hits his head on like the ramp and he knocks himself out cold, but then his body still has to go down the moguls out cold. So he's just like slumping <laughs> over the hills, like going oh, no. and like not moving. It was terrible. I'm laughing because oh, no. like the visual Shame of him, you. Shame on the, the visual That's was good. Not very and I, good. <laughs> and I think he was okay at the end of it, obviously. Like nice, irrelevant. Nice recovery. nice recovery. But the we'll video, the video what about, what about ice hockey luxury box twerking? As a, <laughs> I'd like I to mean, see that as a winter sport. I'd I like think the U S has that work. one locked up. You can't teach it. You gotta be born with it. Uh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I think I'm going to do this thing where I'm going to get to know my Olympic Canadians beforehand. So I'm not, I'm not <laughs> learning. Do that? That All right. Chalmers, so, can you Chalmers. commit to every episode, yes. giving us an Olympic profile? <laughs> profile. <laughs> so, yes. You sounds have to do great. That. Okay. Well, you're fucking better. <laughs> okay, but we well, if they start on the February third, so I might have to do like a couple sure. every episode. Yeah, or just, do feature, it. Or do just it. feature or, or or feature some uh some hopefuls, hopefuls, wow, hopefuls. Yeah, hopefuls. Yeah. Do you want me to do, you want me to do one quickly right now? Yeah, <laughs> right, sure. Bang one out. Okay. Right, we got? Let's see. Evander let, me, let me jam one out. Okay, let me jam one out. The sixteen long track speed skaters nominated oh. for Team Canada. All right. Are going to be a formidable team of eight men and eight women competing in long track speed skating. Um, We're short track country. Long we track, are short bad. track country. Not bad. Um, I also love speed skating. Four years ago, Ted Yon Blowman was the only Canadian to win a medal on the big oval when he claimed that. the 5,000 meter silver. Ooh, we are it. not very not good at this. We're not long trackers. We're short okay. trackers. So let's see. Ice hockey. Okay, well, we've got a world champion here. Two thousand on December tenth, two thousand and twenty-one. Uh, Laurent Duberule. I'll have to get these names figured out. You will. Uh, yeah, yeah. Laurent Dude. Duberule skated to gold in the first of two five hundred meter races at the ISU Speed Skating World Championship, uh, World Cup. Sorry, uh, headlining the women's team. You know what? This is gonna be fun. I'll, I'll, I will definitely do this. Okay. Yeah. Breaking news. We are sending Chalmers on assignment to Beijing Whoa. to cover the Olympics. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I'd love that. Can I go to Japan and just sit See in, in June. there and do it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we good? Oh, okay. Anyone else? We're good? Solid? Good episode? If Devin yeah. Dubnik sure. backstops Team Canada to a gold medal, although I'm thrilled as a Canadian, if you have to ask the question... <laughs> Dudes, we got a couple. We listen to this. Connor House skated to a silver in the 1500 Division A race at the same speed skating world champion or world cup. 
we got some players here. Oh, this is exciting stuff. We got some ballers and shot. Olympic ballers. fever. Hello. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this. You may have an actual fever, Chalmers. I'm not sure how this is going for you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, there's some going around right now. <laughs> no, but listen, it's good that I got skaters out of the way because this is going to be the only skaters speed skating one I do because, you know, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. It's not that exciting. I, f- I forget and who our skiing hopefuls are. I used to, I'm kind of. Well, like, you'll find out on Thursday. Ooh, stay tuned. Can't <laughs> wait. Tuned. That's a team. Finally, That's something a exciting team. to talk about. This is awesome. Like what are Sorry generally a- reading player or Olympic athletes names? Like he's reading a phone book for an hour and a half. What, what, what events are we generally solid in? Like something that I can kind of set my watch to that I can look. So like curling. Moguls, moguls were unbelievable at obvious. Like we're good. We usually win gold in that. Don't we? Well, we're, we're competitive. We're definitely, we definitely podium mo- more times than not in that. But there's, I, I, what I want to find is that like that, that, that kid that's like 16 or something for Ken- like Mark Morris and snowboarding. He's there again this year. Is he not? Mark Morris. Yeah. 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 He's uh Mick Morris. He, so Charles, he's I'll give good. you a name to watch. Ready? Silken Lawman. Keep your eyes open for her. No, that's name I, I haven't heard think, for a while. Yeah. She's so brand she, new too. Yeah. No, I don't she's, know. Yeah, she's she's rowing in the. But no, that's a good question. You know what? Your M Chuck, these are all or, yeah, bag milk. These are all questions I am going to delve deeply to the bottom of. I'm going to be an Olympic Chalmers, expert by the time. Here's the sports starts. we want to focus on: ski cross, snowboard cross, winter anything, rowing, anything. Yeah, winter rowing, anything. Big air half pipe. Ooh, bob sledding. I'll definitely do the bob, bob sledding and the one man skeleton. Oh, skeleton is by far one of my favorite events because it just like it's such a ridiculous sport to watch. You know, it's just it's like high speed false toboggan. advertising. There's no skeletons involved. That is true. So well, it's because you become a skeleton by doing it. It's but imagine such- they called it baseball, but there was no baseball present. <laughs> so not only are you the Canadian champion in skeleton, but you are the craziest human being in Canada. So they get two two titles for the price of one. I was, I, I'm watching that F1 show on Netflix and uh, I can't remember which ri- driver it was, but they're talking about doing the skeleton and he's like, are you crazy? He's an F1 driver and he thinks skeleton is crazy. <laughs> it is bananas. <laughs> it's it's just insane. completely nuts. <laughs> Bob said we are competitive and yeah, we, we're, we're not bad. Like the Germans and like the Austrians, they're very good at the sliding sports, but we can sometimes get on the podium, sneak one on in the bobsled. Two man luge is where it's at. That's the one you're basically steering with your butt cheeks and luges from as far as I can understand. Two guys <laughs> just stacked on top of one another. Now lay on each other. <laughs> well, and, and I and I, I think I, I I think there's a woman's two person luge. It's just it's the weirdest thing ever. Like you show me you a mixed luge. Wrap yourself on onto another human. Other. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I would love, I've always had this dream that I could be like the person in the back of the bobsled just to experience what it's like flying down there. Oh, you need one of those thick, thick ass quads. Our boy Neville, who was, uh, who we interviewed here was that guy. Yep. That, that's 100%. where the big, big push comes from. Yep. I just always thought it would be so cool to experience what that's like just as the back and then to feel the G forces as you're ripping around the course. Just Ooh, you, gotta, and you don't get to see anything. Yeah. You're just you bobbing around. Back there. You're just bobbing around, just getting beat up. It's like being the guy, in the, the rowing team that has the mega horn saying crew. The Coxman. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think it's funny sorry. about the Olympics. I think a lot of them did their world championships like right around December. Yeah. So like there was pairs ice dancing the right around yeah. December, the qualifiers yeah, and PGA. COVID's putting a, wow, this is interesting. I, uh, kind of like what I'm, what I got going on here now. Well, it's good. You, you, you know, you get a little bit into the research of it. You identify some people you want to cheer for. And the Olympics is great. You get some stories about everyone in every different discipline and it gives you, you know, more of a reason to watch and get behind something. And you just throw it on all day. It's the best. Uh, yeah. It's good. It's so good. I, I That's the best thing about the Olympics, too, is you find yourself super engaged in a sport you may never have heard of before that day. I love it. The one the one I've got the most respect for is the Nordic uh, combined, where they have to do the um, like biathlon, like um, cross country skiing for so many million kilometers. And then the next day they do the, like the, like the ski high jump. Oh, just what a ridiculous combo. <laughs> it incorporates. Know. Yeah. So it incorporates. Oh my God. These guys are nuts too. It incorporates ski jumping and cross country skiing. Yeah. 
Like that's oh that's that's goodness. the real biathlon. They they should mix in shooting, and it should be the the winter triathlon. They should mix shooting in with figure skating. That'd be interesting. I won't tell you how. Mm-hmm. Actually, that'd be amazing. During your routine, there's targets in the audience they have to kill. Think about that, Charles. I'll get that. your Olympic spirit going. A triple sow cow followed by a, a clean shot at the target. A kill shot. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any? Like, we I, didn't I even know. have anybody that went last year or last Olympics. To what? What's Elvis Stoiko doing? Where's in he the Nor- in days? the Nordic combined? Oh. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's not our discipline. The country's best finish came in Lake Placid in 1932, where Jostine Nordmo placed a 10th overall. Wow. You'll never Canada's, beat her. Canada's most recent Olympic competitor was Jason Meislicki. At Vancouver 2010, where he placed 45th and 44th in the men's individual normal hill 10K cross country and men's individual large hill 10K cross country. That's not the Nordic combined. That sounds exhausting. That is exactly the Nordic combined. But you jump off, you do the high jump. Where was this high jump? That's a big mountain. It's the, they don't actually say like it's the event features a ski jump followed by a 10K. That oh, is what's gotcha. called normal hill 10k. And then in oh, the bigger gotcha. one, it's big hill 10k, large hill 10k. Ah, the two. Okay. That makes sense. Sorry. Yeah. 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 The dates for that are February 9th, 15th, and 17th. Yep. Mark it down. Nordic combined. Mark, Let's mark go. <laughs> Everyone's got to pick their horse for their favorite. We're going to do a Nordic combined pool. Okay. Sure. Done. I cannot wait to bet on the Olympics. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. It's going to be the best. Oh God. Throwing your money behind some underdog and like short track speed skating and just screaming at your TV. That'll be good. Can't wait. Short track's always entertaining. There's always mm-hmm. a crash. Which that's why I think amazing. the dogs, that's my professional betting advice. That's why you go with the dogs. You never know who's going to wipe out. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Clear, clear up the front and come up. Yeah, I know hundred percent. Actually but, in the that, relay events. Yeah. Oh, hundred yeah. percent in the relay events, but, uh, it's amazing. They, they, they skate so close to so close together and they got like a 24 inch blade attached to each foot. Yeah. It's wild. And just, yeah. Fuck it. It's wild. Anyways, can't wait. <sighs> I'm looking at a site that only projects Canada to win 23 medals, which is funny because that's tied for fourth with the United States. In the projected standings, the Russian team will have 31, Germany will have 25, and Norway will win with 45. These are projected medal counts for the Beijing. Norway will win with 45. That's what they say. It's, it's amazing how much of a powerhouse Norway is in the winter. It's des- like it's designed for them. Based on the 2020 census from Norway, they only have 5.379 million people living but there. But all they do is cross country ski and 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 high jump. Like that's all they do. Like like that's their like that's their pastime. So they just dominate the world. It's awesome. This to see. site is outrageous. You guys would love this. They say that Canada will win seven gold medals, and then they have the projected people to win gold medal. Um, but then they say in 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 um in the outrageous portion, Canada will fail to medal in curling. What do they project Criminal. for ice hockey men's? They say that one Russia. caveat for the hockey, those projections came out just before the NFL players withdrew. Canada's replacement roster will still be capable of capturing, capturing gold. It took bronze in 2018, but defending champion Russia is now betting favorite to win the men's tournament with amateur players. Yeah. Russia will win. Although they aren't amateur players, they're still professionals. They're all KHL guys. Like they're all like, yeah. So it's sure. Yeah. Ovechkin will be there. Hey. Well, I'm I'm surprised. Like he loves playing for Russia. I'm surprised he's not. But he also wants to break Gretzky's record. So maybe missing those games ain't good. He's ten back of Yager now for third all time. Um, I mentioned there was sixty five hundred at the Sabers game. If there is six hundred and fifty at the Coyotes game right now, I would be stunned. That barn is. Empty. Really? That just popped up on my Twitter. That's hilarious. Huh. Either way. Yeah. We have, oh man, we have a favorite in the high, in the big air snowboarding competition. I love we that. We have the, the favorite in great. the world. We're going to learn all about these people. I'm I looking forward to air. it. I can't wait for the Chalmer uh, Olympic profiles as we go along here. Yeah. Yeah. 
You need inspirational okay. Olympic anthems like NBC uses when they're breaking it down, though. I love the, the Olympic anthems when it went like the, the best. NBC when the NBC or the CBS coverage starts mm-hmm. and you get the Olympic music. Yeah. Oh, that's you're chills. feeling it. That's chills. Who was the big oh god? And what did he win? But he was he basically won like one of the first two or three events. Uh, at the last Olympics, and then just walked around like chugging pitchers of beer everywhere. <laughs> was that in Vancouver? No, that was that oh, was in 2010, was... and that was Ross in the Rubley middle. Adams. That was in the middle of the Olympics, and that was who he was hosts, it? He hosts uh, Scott Montgomery or something. No, he hosts uh, Amazing Race Canada. Uh, hosting, hosting, uh, Amazing Race Canada. Scott something or something Canada. Yeah, he won. He won the skeleton or something. Did John he? Montgomery. He John Montgomery, yeah. He won the skeleton and then wa- walked around the Olympic <laughs> village, took some guy's picture from him and crushed it on camera. You do that I the Beijing that. Winter Olympics what did village you- and the authorities <laughs> will deal with you? John John Montgomery, what did you... I always think it's funny what I search in Google to get what I want, and I just wrote Montgomery Beer Chug Olympics. And <laughs> God, and shit, did it nail it with it. Like, tons of videos, chugging beer. This guy's killer. Yeah, that guy had a time. This is the Olympic theme song. Yeah, yeah that guy. is one of them. Yeah. Now, if That's you like drink someone's can- beer in the Olympic Village, which doesn't exist because there's no beer allowed, they'll pick you off of the drone. Yeah, the bowl, the drums. Don't play it for more than 15 seconds. They're listening. Trust yeah. me. We all go to jail. Ooh, fucking nab. Don't worry. We we went I'm 11 kidding. on that one. Ooh-wee. We're going long on this pod. It's really, we're an hour and 20 into this, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Jeez, we're just. I think. I think. I think. <laughs> you can play this thing at one double speed because everyone's talking so. so I think that. Sad. I think we're just. This is just a podcast where it's just like a. We're just being a support net, network to one. <laughs> we're just like trying to talk, just to. What just sport to won't break our hearts? We can cheer for this. <laughs> Nordic combined, man. Let's go. We can bet on the Nordic combined. <laughs> And your Remtrek just, I think you're also finding therapy in this because you refuse to end it. I've, a couple of times I've been like, hey, anyone else got something else to talk about? Like, you have to remember, usually I spend, you know, 30 minutes driving in, 30 minutes driving home. So if we go an extra hour here, I'm still, I still got time to oh, God. more stuff. What are we going to talk about? The Battle of Midway 1942, which is coming up on under Olympic theme songs. Let's not do that. Do you know who that, the Olympic theme song is made by? John Tess. Kodak Black. I'd you, love you, to got hear first, Kodak Black's you, you got the first name right, but it's John Williams, the same composer who did oh, Star, Star, Wars. Star Wars. This guy never uh, misses. He wrote no, the he, Olympic theme. Yeah. yeah, Superman, Jaws. Yeah, he he's do done it? it all. How does he do it? John, we need you to sum up the Olympics with trumpets. Give me 45 minutes. We need you to <laughs> solve the Oilers roster problems. Let's go. John Give me 46 Williams. minutes. I like how just I sent you guys a, a Instagram post in the group text where it's just now we're getting the Connor and Leon are going to want out phase of the yes of the horribleness. But like that's the fucking and that's that like this is what goes through my head now. Like that's where it's gotten to where I'm like no 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 like we're we're gonna we're gonna get things going we're gonna get the team that they need. What like, can we're not giving team them the team they like need to see McDavid on? Who put this out? That one is from TSN, you mother. They're going us, but like, here's the thing. They're not wrong. And to, unless we do something real fucking fast, because if it doesn't happen fast, because we've burned through all this time. Who in the world runs the Hockey Fights Instagram account? Nation Dan. He wrote, he comments on the post. He wants to go to a winning team, dot, dot, dot. So wow. Dan, Dan stirred well, the pot. Yeah, but that would be Dan. That would be Dan saying none of those Canadian teams are winning. Teams. Our favorite young cabinet guy, Eric Moon, fifty-five. Any other team? Edmonton stinks. <sighs> that guy makes cabinets. Are you calling out uh, our no, listeners? He doesn't make cabinets. He just works at a cabinet company. He's the he works at my of favorite the cabinet company. company. I like kidding. Eric, and boy, oh boy, he is. Boy, I have another friend that works there too. Actually, thin ice right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Life. What's your friend's name? I'm not, I'm not here to drop. <laughs> don't names. tell him. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> when Chalmers gets that tone of voice, don't tell him anything. I don't even right. want to read these comments. Bag Milk, why are you putting this on me? I don't want Did you watch like, the TikTok I sent, though? Uh, good night. No, I haven't. Let's, 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 <laughs> on air, let's do a preview. Yeah. Oh, that's the mogul guy. 
It's that's, from Mogul. I don't know sleeping. if I want to be sleeping face first in the <laughs> and just slumping over the moguls as he goes. That guy's my you spirit animal. That's why I'm watching that. the Oilers right now. Like that guy goes down moguls. Yeah, that is the Oilers season, hey? <laughs> oh, that's a meme. Starts out oh. great. Yeah, that's a good call. Good call. That's just how we think that, that's how we all feel right now. We think in memes. Yeah. Well, all right. This Saturday, group therapy session. We can go to the game together and we can cry together. It's fucking booze free me. BOA. So that ain't the answer. Yeah. That takes it's better B be turned the around. BOA. By, it's the OA. It's better be turned around by the time we go to Jasper or something. Something real bad is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Chalmers is going to go fire the coach himself. You're going to charge into OEG offices and be like, Dave, you're I'm going to get a credit. I'm going to get accredited. I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to say, tip. You are fired. You're out. You're out. Slap a mustache say, on him first. I mean, Glue a come, mustache to Dave Tippett's upper lip and you will be the Oilers fan of the month. It'd be nice if he grew his mustache out now because we need, clearly need a slump buster. Why isn't he doing that? He really loves his wife. Because yeah. he said she doesn't like his mustache. All right. We're going to wrap this like thing up. like the money that his career makes? <laughs> Shout out to our friends at uh, at the HGA group, our title sponsor of the show. Shout out to Twig and Berries, Tourism Jasper, and our friends over at TradesLink. I don't even feel like giving anyone a hardest worker of the week because the Oilers blew a lead in the, the third. The fans period. are the oh, hardest man. worker. Of the oh, week. yeah. The fans are the hardest fans workers. Are without yeah. question. They're, um, they're, their patience I'm, and their men, their, their 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 minds and about trying to find a way to still remain happy with this team. No, not happy. I guess loyal to this team. That's a lot of hard work. And also shout out to anyone who's trying to protect us from these roads today. Any road crews, you're working your asses off. You're sliding all over the place to make sure we can have some version of safe transportation. We mm-hmm. salute you. I salute you. There you go. That's going to do it. Let's for go, Cardinals. Let's go. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.